Today we're going to chat about five more pieces of large format fluff as well as this channel's very first giveaway. Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, here's a playlist of our entire second season of LFF. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're going to chat about something new in the world of large format photography. Early on in the channel, I talked about some useful little pieces of kit that add to the large format experience, and I called those some pieces of large format fluff. Today, I wanted to chat about five more pieces of large format fluff that I think can also help in the experience. Now, these aren't things that you need to buy to shoot. They're just little extras, little fluffy bits that some folks just love to have on their camera, myself included. So let's get started. In the old camera bag here today, one first little piece of large format fluff, which is definitely an optional one, but one I really want to talk about because it gets brought up time and time again on forums and groups, is what's known as a viewing filter. This is a Tiffin number one viewing filter. This is a very, I'm not sure if you can even see it from the camera, this is a very deep yellow filter which helps someone simulate the panchromatic look of a black and white film. So it's really compressing our visual range down to what we might see in black and white if we make a proper exposure. It kind of knocks the highlights down quite a bit and it keeps our shadows somewhat readable. The whole idea of it is to flick it in front of your eye for a brief few seconds and pull it back. If you go ahead and hold it in front of your eye for too long, your eye is going to adjust and your visual field will expand and you'll start to see more of that range. So the whole idea is to help someone who hasn't gotten used to shooting black and white, it's to help them get better at black and white. So you don't even need this for large format. You can use this for 35, 120, anytime you're not comfortable with this. If you're really new to black and white, it's kind of a fun tool to, to showcase to folks. So that's the viewing filter. Tiffin made them, Zone 6 made them, uh, you can buy the Rattan Gel for it. So there's a lot of options for that. Don't buy one new, they're probably way too expensive, just buy a used one. So our next piece of large format fluff is one that was given to me as a gift from another large format photographer, and I didn't appreciate it until I started shooting a lot more nature photographs. And that is this little thing. An anemometer. 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 It doesn't roll off the tongue. I had to practice that a bunch of times to get it right. So what this is, this is kind of like a little weather report in your pocket. Well, wait, don't you have smartphones now? We do, but a lot of places nature photographers go don't have as strong a cell phone signal. And if you don't want to carry your smartphone around or you're in places where data might be spotty, having one of these handy is great. What an anemometer does is it's got this little turbine up top. This can measure wind speed, relative humidity, the temperature, so it's really kind of like a, a weather report in there. Humidity, dew point, it's all in here and it's pretty darn accurate. Even versus like what my smartphone tells me for local forecasts, I can get the wind speed in about five seconds with this unit. Just gotta hold it up, press the button for my setting, and I can find what my measurement ends up being. So a very handy little tool. The one thing I noticed about the anemometer that I wasn't a fan of is it uses a watch battery. And like many things that use these watch style alkaline batteries, these batteries will go bad if they get cold or having a bad day or if they're left in the unit for too long. So either carry an extra one or just take it back out of the unit when you're not using it for a long time. And if you don't know when that's gonna be, just buy the extra battery and have it on you. Another very important piece of large format fluff that was brought up in the comments of my first large format fluff video is a cloth tape. So you could use a tape measure, but this is really handy because it's super lightweight. This maybe weighs half an ounce. And this little cloth tape measures in inches as well as centimeters for our focal length of lenses. And we can use this to quickly calculate our bellows extension factor. I can measure from my front standard to my rear standard where the ground glass is and see how far out my bellows are drawn. And like I talk about in my bellows extension factor video, the further out I am beyond my infinity focus of my bellows, the more I'm gonna to have to compensate for that with extra exposure. So this can be our little bellows extension factor tool. This is one that I don't bring out with me enough, but after it was mentioned in the comments, I always have it on me and it's really been helpful for my exposures really close up. All right, next up in the bag, I have one that is good for if you have multiple camera systems. So if you have a monorail camera and a field camera or just systems that have different lens boards and you need to change lenses in and out. While I don't recommend doing this all the time, if you have to, 
you might as well make it easy on yourself. And we can do that with these little guys. These are what are known as lens wrenches. So they're specialty spanner wrenches that are designed for certain sizes of copal shutter in large format. This is one from uh, Linos. I think I got this one on Amazon. And then this is another one that I found. This is Toyo made one. I think Horseman made them. There's a lot of folks that sell these type lens wrenches, but really all you're looking for is the shutter that matches. So this one does Copal number zero, Compier number zero, and Copal number one, as well as Seiko number one. This is really important because I have a few Fujinon lenses that take the Seiko shutter instead of a Copal shutter. And you can see it's just a little bit bigger than a Copal one. So it's really helpful to have something specific for that. And then this one does zeros, ones, larger sizes, as well as copal threes. So this is for my big boy lenses. I can just crank it in there and move. If you try to take off a lens without a spanner wrench, but using like two flathead screwdrivers, you could accidentally scratch something and you don't want to hurt your aperture blades or that rear element of your lens. So this is really helpful to throw in the camera bag and quickly change out a lens. Or if you're in the field and you're really rough with it, you're kind of wrenching the shutter speeds or the preview dial on your lens, you might actually push that retaining ring out a little bit or move it in the shutter. This helps you tighten that shutter back down with the retaining ring. So really helpful little tool. That's your lens wrenches. I'm going to put a link in the description to where you can get some lens wrenches. So my last little piece of large format fluff I wanted to show today was one that was actually gifted to me, but I find really useful for long timed exposures. And that's this little guy. So if you've seen some of the old Kodak or Polaroid self timers for ending up in the picture, this is not quite it. It looks very similar to it, but this is a timer for guaranteeing consistent exposure times for bulb exposures. So longer exposures over a second. If you don't want to have like your smartphone and you're doing the timer on there while holding the release in another, if you're holding that release for too long, we humans tend to shake a little bit. Using one of these units, I can go from two seconds all the way up to a whopping 32 seconds. And when I press this release here, it starts timing down and it plunges the release the entire time that I'm waiting for my exposure to go. And it sounds like a kitchen timer. So you're gonna have that sound going until we are all the way at the end of our long timed exposure. And when we get to the very end of that, we're going to have this plunger release and then it's good to go. Almost. There it goes. And the other cool thing is if you have a large format lens that has bulb, but maybe not T for timed exposure on the side here, there's a little T lever. So I can press that and do my exposure. Pretty cool stuff. So even more exciting than adding pieces of large format fluff to our kit. If you're someone that doesn't yet have a large format camera, I want to add an entire camera to your kit. A few weeks ago, I got an email from a viewer of the show who said, I want to give away a camera. And I said, sure. The camera came in recently and I've added a few bits to it so we can have an entire giveaway kit. So here's what we've got. We have an Intrepid Mark II, solid little four x five, which is great for a starter. I've added a Linhoff Technica style lens board as well as a Linhoff Select 90 millimeter F6.8 lens shutter tested. It also is going to come with a cable release to fire the lens a light meter, three four x five film holders that are light tested, a pack of FPP industrial x-ray film to get shooting, an extra ground glass just in case one breaks, a changing bag and a dark cloth. This is everything you need to get started in large format photography. If you are watching this video right now and you need a large format camera, head to mattmarash.com, that's M-A-T-M-A-R-R-A-S-H.com. There's gonna be an LFF tab. You're gonna click that tab and that's gonna take you to the giveaway sign up form. Let's go ahead and fill out that form so I can get in touch with you if you're the lucky winner. And this is a worldwide contest. This isn't open to just you know North America. This is anywhere in the world. If I can reasonably get this camera kit to you, 
I wanna get it to you. I wanna put this camera in the hands of someone that's gonna love it, appreciate it, and get out there and shoot. That's the most important part of all this stuff we're talking about. So again, all you're gonna to have to do is head to mattmirage.com. I'm gonna put a link below in the description so you can go right to that form and fill that out. If you have friends that you know are thinking about large format or they're just getting into film photography, send this video to them so they can sign up too. I wanna to see how many folks we get entering this contest if we can get a lot of signups, more than likely there's gonna be giveaways like this in the future too. This giveaway is gonna run for a month. So that's four large format Friday episodes. I'm gonna put a reminder in each episode while this is still going. If you're watching this here in the, in the distant future where the camera's already been given away, well, all I can say is subscribe. We're probably still giving away stuff on the channel. So thanks again for stopping by. If you have any questions, you can always shoot them to largeformatquestions at gmail.com. And we'll catch you next time for more Large Format Friday.